So when there's not enough room, they're stacking. Then they f end up with enough room to go next to one another. But because there's not a lot of room for them, well, here we have our container query saying that this one's allowed to stretch the full size. These don't have enough room for them, so they're stacking, or they're, they're still two columns. So we get this small little range here where these guys actually go next to each other. This guy's still going across. They run out of enough room. They stack back across each other this way. Then as this continues to shrink down, they're going to end up with enough room to once again go next to one another this way. And then they're going to eventually run out of room and then they're going to stack with each other that way once again. And this to me just absolutely blows my mind. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, we learn how to embrace the cascade and fall in love with CSS. And what a better way to fall in love with it than to look at some of the new things that are on the horizon for it and look at one of the things that people have maybe been complaining about for the longest and clamoring for and asking for for years now, which we've long thought impossible, but thanks to a proposal that has been made by Miriam Susan, it looks like they are becoming a reality, and that is container queries. This might be one of the biggest things to come to CSS in a really, really, really long time. Container queries are just something that I'm extremely, extremely excited about, and they're just something that's gonna open up some really new doors in how we think about layouts on the component level. I really do believe this is gonna be a huge game changer in how we make websites. Let's go and jump in and see what all the fuss is about. All right, so first things first, if you want to follow along with this or play with these on your own, this is an experimental technology. It is very, very new. And the only place that it currently exists is in Chrome Canary. So you will have to download Chrome Canary. There is a link to it in the description down below. And from there, you're also going to have to come into here. And when you're here, you're going to write Chrome uh, colon forward forward slash and do flags like that. Uh, so we go into the flag area. You're going to come to here and you can see it's at the top for me, but that's because I've enabled it. But you're going to come here and just look up container and it should just show up there and it'll probably be on default for you. So you just want to come and stick it on enabled to make sure that it is enabled in your Chrome Canary. Now, maybe you're watching this way in the future and this is spread and it's not only available here, but for now, as time of publishing this, it is only in Chrome Canary. I hope that it is just available everywhere when you're watching this. <laughs> Once that's done, you can close that and you can get to work in whatever you want to be uh, doing. So we're going to do that here. And I just saw one thing that's really bugging me right now. I'm just going to come on my H1 <laughs> and we're just going to make a little adjustment of a line height of one on that because that spacing was really bothering me before we dive in. Uh, there will be a lot of new potentially properties and values along the way. I'm really going to be breaking them down as much as possible in this video. There are timestamps below if you need to revisit certain parts of it along the way uh, as well. So that could make it a little easier if you need to come back here. Uh, just really, really fast. I want to look at a couple of things on how I've organized the content here just because it is important. Um, and so here I have a, a div class of content. And if we go and the content has two things in it, we have an article inside there and we have our aside. So the article right now is everything on the left here. And then my aside is these two cards on the right, right there. And if we go and take a look at my content, let's go and find it in here. Um, you can see it's right here. And then what I've also done is actually we have a, that was a little silly of me right there. Uh, so there we go. Um, but we have a display of flex on here, a flex direction of column with a gap of 2M. So we're getting a flex direction of, uh, actually we have a flex direction of row because of our media query here. And then this gap of 2M is here. Little side note, Gap is now supported by Safari, so that's awesome. Um, and this is traditionally how we would do things when we want layouts to change. We could change the flex direction, then it goes from uh, the items here is the original one. We have a flex direction of column, then we hit a minimum width of 60M. When we hit that minimum width of 60M, the flex direction changes, so the aside, instead of everything being stacked, the aside is moving up next to it. This is the traditional way of working and this makes a lot of sense. And in this case, because it's a bigger picture item, because we're looking at something that's just floating around in the body that is looking at the viewport, this works perfectly fine. And you don't, we never, we don't want to change what we're doing there. I think media queries still have a place. I think they always will. And it's on these bigger picture layout things where things break down a little bit is with these cards that are inside of here, because these are self isolated elements that could be used in different contexts. If we go in my aside, I have this narrow aside here where I just have some cards floating around. Uh, but then if we go and look inside my article, well, here we have all this content and I just happen to have this card guy here and another card floating down here. And this is where media queries don't make any sense because this card could be used in different contexts, different places across different pages or different contexts within a single page like I'm doing here. And this is when 
if I tried to use a media query for this, it just wouldn't work. And there are ways that you could get around this a little bit with Flexbox and playing around with max widths and grows and things like that with flex wraps. But uh, this idea of container queries just makes it so much more intuitive on how it's all working. And of course, this is a relatively simple example. We could get much more complex than this, but I want to focus on how the container queries are working here and how we can set them all up. Uh, as I said, there's going to be some new properties you haven't seen. We'll try and break them down as much as possible. So the cards are clearly where we really want to have a container query here. So we're going to start there. So here I have a little bit of styling on my cards, but nothing, nothing too fancy. Um, and what we're going to do is the first thing that you probably haven't seen before, um, or at least maybe parts of this, which is the contain property. So on the card itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write contain and we're going to write layout and inline size. So the contain property itself is telling the browser that this is like a self-contained unit pretty much that the, the things that are inside of here will not be affecting what's outside of it. So you can set widths, heights and stuff like that on the parent itself. But if there's different things happening on the in, inside of it, they're not going to have an influence on the outer page in ways that sort of traditionally, you know, you might be going, well, it never does. It, it, you can have impacts on it. So just to be careful with that. So just so you know, like that's the idea here is we have a self-contained layout. So inline size, it's your main axis, your inline axis, right? So it's from left to right. Uh, if you're a left to right language, if it's a right to left language, it's still, that's your main, your inline axis. If you were to switch this and do it on a language that is in the other direction, this would then become up and down. But, but in all the videos that I'm making, inline size will always be left to right. And then the block size would be up and down. Block size is part of the proposal by Miriam, but as far as I've heard, they're not sure if they're actually, it's not implemented right now, and they're not sure if they ever will implement that, just so you know. Um, and it does make a lot of sense that it's on the inline size. Um, I'm not sure what use cases there would be for block size, but if you can think of any, they would love to know. I'll put a link and a bit more information on how you can uh, be part of the process of working on this and getting through and adding and adding your opinion to what they're working on and all of that um, down below as well. So. Um, here we have the layout and inline size. So we're containing our card and we're saying this is a self-isolated element, more or less. So now what we want to do is we actually want to bring in a container query. So we have all these card things here. So I think for me, I'm just going to come down here and what I'm going to write is it's like a media query, but it's an at container <laughs> and, and it looks exactly uh, like a media query where we get at container, we have our opening close brackets, and then we have our squiggly braces. Um, and just like a media query, you can use min or max widths on here. So I'm going to do a min width. Uh, I'm going to write 25 rem and we're going to experiment and see if we, if this works or not. You will notice that VS Code's actually yelling at me here saying this is an unknown rule. Again, this is an experimental technology at the time of recording. And so it will work if, even if VS Code yells at you, but it will only be working in Chrome Canary. Now, just like a container query, just like a media query, you come in here and you make your selectors and you make changes to them. There is one thing with this though is that, and this took me a little while to wrap my head around and I got a little bit stuck with it and it will change how we're writing our markup a little bit when you want to use them. Because what this is saying is this is a self-contained unit. This is the container. So this is the container. This isn't what we're going to change. This is like when we're saying at container, we're sort of saying at this card in, in the way that I'm going to use it. Um, so we're, we're focused on the size of the card. So if I say min width 25 rem, we're saying that when the card has a minimum width of 25 rem, we want things to change. So we can choose things inside of here to change. We can't really change the card itself because the card is the container. So what we want to do, just uh, to show you, let's just say I did card uh, image and we'll throw a display none on here. So the image, you can see that image has disappeared on this area, but here we still have our images. And as this gets smaller, now all the images have disappeared. And as we keep going, at one point, the images turn back on because we've hit this. This is a minimum width, so it's 25 rem and bigger. Our images are being turned off. So the images can pay attention to the size of the card because the card is their container. Now, I said this means that we might be changing how we're going to write our HTML a little bit. And that's because to really use this, what we're going to need to do is anytime we have a card. So here, I'm going to go down to the ones in the aside for now. Um, or we'll do this card too. The, the other one doesn't matter too much because I didn't have an image. And what we're going to have to do is add in a new div that surrounds everything. So you're going to have a parent div and then a child div to be able to use your container queries properly. So I can select all that, control shift P, that gives me my, uh, I'll write, I'm going to write a uh, wrap. And here I'm just going to put a div. Now we could give this a class if we wanted to, 
but I'm just gonna write div like that. Uh, or you know what, let's give this a class. And this is where I, you don't really need one. You could just find ways of getting around it. I wanna look at how you could do it without one, but here let's just put card container because you know that's exactly what it is. I was using BEM along the way, but I'm gonna keep it like, uh, yeah, let's just leave it like this. And so, you know, card container, because we're using it for the container queries. Now it's kind of weird because I guess this is more the card container. So anyway, this is where the language, the class names, I think it's something that's gonna get sorted out as we use them. Um, so the two choices here are, if you didn't want to give it a class, you could just say card and then div like that and put your styles on that. So it's the div, the direct child of the card, the div that's a direct child of the card, you're selecting that and then you can make changes to it. Uh, we gave it a name, so we could come in and actually say card, uh, card container. I'm not sure which one's a better approach yet. I'd love to know what you think and how you would see yourself using it uh, in the comments below. So do you like the direct child div or do you prefer the idea of having a class on here? Let me know in the comments. Um, so if we do something like that with the card container, what we could say is that this card container gets a display. Uh, actually, what I'm gonna do is display flex. Uh, not display flex, let's do a flex direction of at small, uh, bigger sizes, um, it's going to be a flex direction of row, so the children are columns, um, and that just means that in normal circumstances, we'll have a card container that's going to be a display of flex, and this will be column, like that. And let's just shift those over. So this is only on one of my cards right now, but we should, <laughs> so, and we should see it coming in and working right there. Um, so you can see here, this card has enough room and the, the, the direction for it is flex and it's getting the flex direction of uh, row on there because we have a lot of room for it. And then as we shrink down at one point, that should switch and maybe it's a little too narrow, but we can see that it switches over at that point and then it works that way. So let's go and add those to my other two cards now. So that's my dot card container. Uh, so that's in my... So I'm going to select all of here. I'm going to push Alt on my keyboard and select inside of this card too, which would go up to there. Uh, Shift Control P, wrap, and we'll just put a dot card container on there. I think I set those all up in the right spot. <laughs> and now we can actually see that that's working. So here, these guys are stacking one on top of each other uh, like this. This guy's going one next to each other. Then as this shrinks down, now there's more room, they actually get to go next to each other. And then they run out of room again, and we're gonna have to play with these sizes because we got some overflow going on. And then it goes back this way. Perfect. So let's fix that a little bit. And I saw another thing that I wanna do and play with these a little bit more. Um, so you know what, one thing we could do to fix that a little bit is if we said card uh, image, and this had a max width, uh, or maybe even card container would make more sense here. We could do just be, you know, you never know what you're gonna do with something. So a direct image inside, you know, an image directly inside there could have a max width of like 10 rem. And I think that should give us a little bit better of an experience. So the images are there, but now when they stack, they're not gonna get too big. And maybe that could be a little bit bigger. Uh, that's just, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> that had me worried, but it looks like it's okay. So here we have the images that are stacking. They're able to go full size. But then when they go next to here, they're now setting a max width on them so they don't get gigantic uh, and they don't take up too much room. And then when the cards run out of room, then they stack again and we get this type of look going on just like that. Now this is good, but now see how here, like I have enough room to get these two cards probably to go next to one another instead of stretching all the way across here because these guys are part of my aside right there. So if we go and look at our aside, we have our aside, which um, has a flex basis plus a gap on it, which is fine, except I never put a display flex. Display, uh, we'll put that on, display flex, and then a flex direction. Uh, we want them to be on top of each other right now, so the flex direction on this will be column, so they're rows inside, so it stays the same, but our gap gives us that space that's gonna be right there. Um, and so right now the behavior is the same, but we added our spacing in, which looks a little bit better, but now we could do the same thing that we did before. So I could say that my aside actually has a contain on it. So once again, contain, layout, space, inline, size, just like that. And then what we're gonna need, because remember if you do that, you're setting the aside. So my aside right here is my container. So if my aside becomes the containing block, I need something inside that's paying attention to the side of that. So we can come here and wrap both of these cards and say, uh, so wrap, and maybe dot, we'll just call it a side container. 
um, like that. So card container, then we get our, where is it? A side container right here. So at least we're going with a, a consistent naming. Uh, so it's these three are controlling. The flex basis here is part of my, my main layout. So I'm gonna leave that flex basis alone right there. And what we'll do is a side, a side container now gets these on it. So it has the display flex, the row and the gap on there. So everything goes back to exactly how we had it before where it's working like that. Except what we can say is this is actually going to then have an at container. And for the at container here, we want to give it a size. So let's give this one a different one. We'll say min width is going to be, we'll try 60 rem, we'll play with the number. Um, and you know, it, it could be different things. And at that side, the aside container is going to have a flex direction of row. Um, and every time I'm saving here, things are mucking up a little bit, but once they kick in, and maybe this is too big, let's try uh, 40 and see what happens. So there we go, they're going next to one another. So when there's not enough room, they're stacking, then they f end up with enough room to go next to one another, but because there's not a lot of room for them, well, here we have our container query saying that this one's allowed to stretch the full size. These don't have enough room for them, so they're stacking, or they're, they're still two columns. But then what's gonna happen is at one point they're gonna pass that 40 rem here, and maybe this could even be 35 or something. Um, we'll play with that number a little bit. So we get this small little range here where these guys actually go next to each other. This guy's still going across. They run out of enough room. They stack back across each other this way. Then as this continues to shrink down, they're going to end up with enough room to once again go next to one another this way. And then they're going to eventually run out of room and then they're gonna stack with each other that way once again. And this to me just absolutely blows my mind. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you're looking to up your game with features that are currently supported while you wait for container queries to gain more support, I put a custom playlist of some awesome CSS underappreciated and lesser known about values, properties, and that sort of thing right there. So make sure to check that one out. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of awesome, as well as all my other patrons. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.